Beatrice, Mosquito Harden. What is it and why is it <laughs> It's a really cool sure. design. So the Mosquito so, was, was born out of this is the uh, my frustration with changing um, One of the most exciting developments that were etched in here. Uh, uh, the Mosquito Harden um, created but, uh, it's, it's a So you've probably heard of what happened regarding Slice Engineering recently. One of the most popular American 3D printing manufacturers, mostly known for their Mosquito and Copper and Hardened, appears to have recently been involved in another conflict regarding the 3D printing enthusiast community. If you have been living behind a rock for the past couple of years, let me elaborate. In short, Slice Engineering, creator of the Mosquito Hardened, has patented what they claim to be a unique technology used for separation of the cold and hot end of their Mosquito Hardened about two years ago. This patented technology on the Mosquito, in a very simple manner, basically uses four pillar spacers, or standoffs, between the cold and hot side of a 3D printing hot end. In case of the Mosquito, this is using surgical tube. There's been many other hot ends utilizing the same technology, by far the most popular being the Fetus Dragon and the NF Crazy by Mellow. Others, such as the Red Lizard series from Haldis, which are clones of the dragon, and the now discontinued Triangle Lab Spider, which was a direct mosquito clone, were also present in the evolution of the 3D printing space. While some of these are designed to use the exact same mounting style of the mosquito, thereby being blatant clones, many do entail genuine innovation. Slice Engineering hold a patent on the technology, which many consider to be unoriginal. Slice have enforced this patent on multiple occasions, seemingly in an attempt erasing its competition from the market. So, what's it now? Well, recently, the VZBot team alongside Melo has released their Goliath hot end. A brand new attempt at a hot end heating element, and a shape that has never been seen before in the 3D printing space. The problem? This hot end has spacers that separate the cold end from the hot end and stabilize the hot end to prevent, you know, it breaking off during a print. Due to this, Slice Engineering believed that it infringes on their patent and have apparently attempted to enforce it. On November 11th, which happened to be the date where Slice Engineering's patent for the Mosquito Spacer was validated in China, the Vizepot Goliath was released, and it, including many clones and similarly infringing hotends, were taken down from AliExpress, as you may have noticed yourself. Now, of course, with a big removal comes big action. A large part of the 3D printing enthusiast community was enraged, just as they were in 2020, when hotends like the Triangle Lab Spider were first taken down, and the Slice Engineering patent was first enforced. Consequently, with all of this drama happening again now, Slice has released a statement on intellectual property on their blog, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about now. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Slice Engineering's response. So before we dive in, let's get a quick overview on the article. First, Slice describes what intellectual property, or IP, is. You create something, and in return, you can invest into protecting what is yours, so others cannot steal it. They continue to show, in this short diagram, what happens when you don't invest in IP, but leave your invention unprotected. Though I'll get more into what I think of this later on. Next, Slice Engineering explains their hybrid model, where they have both patented and open source hardens in their lineup. Going back to IP, they say that uniqueness is a large part of it. Their reasoning for their mosquito being patented and being unique is that there's clones of it. And why would anyone clone something that isn't unique? It follows by them responding to what the community has criticized about their IP measures. First, the point that there's less room for innovation in the first place when you patent something. They deny this though, showing injection molding as an example. Many patents exist in the injection molding space, yet the technology still evolves pretty much daily. This happens because us humans have no limit on creativity. Next, they show you an example of this, a Hanen that was made without infringing their patents that's unique and new, the brand new E3 Revo, and that's true. The E3 Revo doesn't infringe their patents, but uses Slice's open-source biometal technology. Closing this, they conclude, If you're a hater that accuses Slice of being a patent troll, you're a communist 
that wants everything to be free and supports exploiting companies that live high on government subsidies. And those companies exist just to undercut small businesses and by that destroy them. After this rather shocking conclusion, they give out a message to all innovators to do their patent research and then publish a product, not do research after you publish. It's better for you to play by the rules, as Slice says. Their last paragraph in the article is an arbitrary comment, stating that they donated to the Sanjay Mortimer Foundation, while referring to the cost of a certain other hot end, which we can assume is the Vizepa Goliath, but we cannot confirm this. This is followed by another seemingly arbitrary comment about donations to veterans. It's extremely nice and very caring of you to donate to veterans, but do not ask me what a hot end patent have to do with veterans. Lastly, a short stay zesty ends the article. I know, I know, that was a lot, but now that we're done with this, let me show you my opinion on this slice statement, and how I think most statements inside come with a bad aftertaste. Firstly, let's look at the bimetal statement with E3D. They showed how E3D used their innovative open source bimetal design and built upon it, making a better and greater product without having cloned anything specifically or infringed their patents. This, though, shows not as they claim that you can make a hardened without violating a patent. Rather, it shows us something completely different. It shows how great open source is for all of us. Were the bimetal technology patented, a lot of hardens that rely on it, which most of them are also very innovative and genuinely new ideas, wouldn't exist at all. This statement that E3D built a brand new hotend on their open source technology just shows how open source and innovating on top of another without protecting every bit of your technology helps out the entire community and industry. Something as small as the bimetal technology can spread a whole lot across many different hotends. This rule doesn't just apply to the bimetal technology, but certainly also the spacer technology that Slice patented. In my opinion, Slice, this point is just simply not valid inside this argument. Next, Slice also showed us how they invested in IP and what not doing so in your brand in this nice little diagram. Again, in this, in my opinion, this can be countered using a very, very popular example. You know it, the Orange Boys, Prusa themselves. Starting as a small company creating open source 3D printers from the ground up. So here you can see my Mendel Remix. Uh, Z-axis is finally working. Uh, I've got For everyone to build, they were the first ones to stand up largely in the RepRap movement, and they involved their open source Mendel, and later MK3, and now MK3, into a huge business. And even with clones being out there that match Prusa's quality for half the price, the MK3S by Prusa themselves is very popular, and people still buy it from Prusa to this day, even with all the clones present. This is due to their awesome customer support, good service, and guaranteed reliability. In my opinion, Slice could take a look at Prusa and invest in those kinds of things instead of spending funds and valuable time patenting their products. Here I edited their graph from what people have shown me they think about this whole situation to make it a bit more accurate, and I think this added accuracy is true. You can see in this graph that with a customer's trust, customer service and openness towards the market, you can reinvest and not lose all of your money. You just have to treat the customers like they're the king and be open to them, which I'm absolutely not implying that Slice is not doing. Their customer service is great, but rather that if they were doing so, if they have the good customer service, why don't just open source? If people and customers are on your side because you're open, because they like your brand and what you do, why is there a need to drown out the competition from innovating on your ideas if the customers will stay with you anyways because they like you? Brand loyalty works. It's demonstrated by companies like Prusa, or even Apple in that sense. Moving on from this... Communists? In a statement about 3D printing pillar patents. Seriously, Slice? I don't think I have to mention how ridiculous I think this is. Seriously, listen, calling anyone who might refer to you as a patent troll, which might just be a joke, for being a communist, 
and then also pulling out a work of literature from a gulag survivor describing his experience, even linking to the Wikipedia page to him, all of this inside an argument about 3D printing pillar patents just sounds ridiculous to me. I don't think I have to mention how unprofessional I think this is. In my opinion, you're making a joke of yourself, Slice. And since you're doing that, I'd argue you shouldn't be surprised of other people trying to make jokes themselves, whether it be in the form of memes or other media. I know this might sound controversial from both sides, but this is all just my opinion. But before we get too stuck up with this, I'm going back to stating facts only. So let's move on to the whole exploiter argument. Do you really think all of the companies that you might call exploiters are always large? Let's take a look at the VZBot team in Mellow for example. Small teams of people creating new and innovative ideas, making them available for everyone to buy. Sure, Mellow has a history of making not so friendly products, but they still are a small team, innovating in quality, especially for low budget 3D printing enthusiasts. Coming back to your other argument, isn't what Mellow is doing, undercutting someone and providing better or equal quality, just how capitalism works in itself? I don't know why you're talking about communism all of a sudden. In my opinion, this also sounds rather egoistic. These companies want to innovate and they aren't just specifically designed to undercut small businesses targeting just you, Slice. They're here to make 3D printing not just more affordable and available to low-cost markets, but they're also there to make their own, new, never-before-seen inventions in the 3D printing community. So, Slice, in my opinion, they aren't specifically just trying to destroy you. But that's what this statement of yours is making me and fellow enthusiasts pick up from it. Seriously, this whole deal is just not about you. It's not about the ego Slice. It's about undercutting and lowering the price so the entry level to 3D printing is generally lower. At least, that's my opinion. Lastly, Slice, your claim of uniqueness. Let's compare this statement to the Goliath. Slice says the mosquito is unique, and the result of that is that there's clones of it, or they question why there's clones of it if it wouldn't be unique. But is the Goliath not unique? Nobody to my knowledge has ever attempted this kind of combination of hot and cold end before. Neither has anyone in the 3D printing space integrated a heating element into a heat block like this. I've heard people say Slice calls the Goliath a clone as well. Well, this makes sense. It does infringe Slice's patents after all. If this hot end is not unique though, which it has to be since it infringes your patents, how is the mosquito unique in that scale? It's also, just like the Goliath, a hot and cold end with a heat break, and screws securing the two, like with the MK8 hot end, which existed before, and well, some spacers. I don't think Slice's uniqueness claims count if they phrase it like that. Also, Slice, is your technology really unique? Let's go back to 2014. You heard it right, 2014. The Harlem Shake and Gangnam Style was still cool. Back then, the Redmond movement was in its early shoes. People were building all sorts of hot ends to experiment with, and this picture was publicized in the Rep Rep forums around 2014. Looking at specimen A, B, and K, do you see some similarities here? Now, is your technology really unique if it's been done over 8 years ago now, and the Goliath uses this technology that has not been patented but was open source back then? Think about that for a second, Slice. How is anyone supposed to make something new and innovative, what the Goliath is, this cheaply, rigidly, and affordably, using spacers without violating your patent? Fellow 3D printing enthusiasts have described to me multiple times how broad this patent can be in their spectrum, and how it really does limit new innovations for them, unlike Slice claims. However, this is just the statements of others. This is not solid proof. Coming back to your other argument, you can't really compare injection molding with 3D printing. With injection molding, patents work because there's a lot more money in the market. In fact, the market estimates go around 262 billion US dollars in 2021, compared to 3D printing with only 12.6 billion dollars. In injection molding, buying patents is profitable in the long run. And in injection molding, there's entire research labs that exist just to optimize it to the tiniest spec. The technology is huge, so huge in fact, 
that it has its own ISO norms for a lot of parameters, while in 3D printing still, everything is basically free range. Also, many patents in injection molding expire rather quickly as they're deemed no longer innovative as the industry moves on to the next steps. You can't really compare injection molding and 3D printing. Now at last, some words for you, Slice. I would suggest you work on your customer loyalty and customer support if you haven't already, which I don't deny that you do. I recommend you solely make open source products and throw the market into completely new territory. You don't even have to make them open source, just don't patent them. Encourage innovation. Encourage building on top of another and creating new, awesome products. I'm aware you already do this with some products, but why don't you just do it with the rest as well? Goliath is a new and innovative design, and frankly, I think that any claim that it infringes your IP and tries stealing or exploiting you is false. We do get your point, Slice, and we know what you mean and we know what you're afraid of, but let this video be a quick reminder of your choice of words and statements inside your, well, statement, and let this be a quick reminder to present yourself more professionally. This will also increase customer loyalty, in fact. Do proper patent research. Yes, Slice, that fact is true. But limiting a completely new idea's potential and not letting them bring this new idea to the table for everyone to even innovate on top of that isn't great either for innovation, isn't it? Now, I think you understand what I mean, and I hope I brought my points over well. Keep in mind that anything said in this video is either my own opinion or things I've heard from other people. Nothing here is stated as fact. I'm just pointing out what 3D printing enthusiasts have been worried about in the current situation. You're free to criticize anything I said in the comments down below, on Discord, or any of my other media. I will try my best to respond to any of your questions, feedback, or others. And if I did anything wrong, please point me out. For Slice Engineering, I do recommend you rethink some things that you said in this article. And that was it for my part. I hope you learned something new out of this. I'll certainly be watching the situation go down further, and I will be updating you on YouTube, as well as any of my other media channels. Thank you for watching, happy printing, and have a nice day. This was Christmas 3D printing. Long live VZBot.